Hello, Sean. One second. <clears throat> hey, how are you? I'm fine. Thank you. How are you? Um, a bit. I don't know whether we're live or not. <laughs> I think you are. It's this life. Does it? In that yes. case, we're live and I'm... I'm new to this. I'm new to, <laughs> I'm new to all the technicals. Where does it say we're live? Um, on the top left, it says for me live. Um, I don't know where it's live. It says on the top left, kind of just below the Zoom meeting, it says yeah. for me that it's I'm live. To, I'm trying to find where on LinkedIn it's live. That's my ah, point. okay, okay. Well, that's that's something I don't know. Yeah, that's what I don't know either. Hmm. Yeah, I've never streamed uh, from Zoom to LinkedIn directly. So, well, not even indirectly. Maybe it's on YouTube. I really need to learn more about <laughs> doing this. Um, <laughs> so the second time I've done it and I was a bit like, how is this working? Are we live? <laughs> I just don't. So let's have a little look. Oh, we are. So we're live on YouTube, but I don't think we're live on LinkedIn. Ah, OK. Can we be live on LinkedIn via we Zoom? We should be, but um, okay. I don't know why that's not the case. Let me start that clock anyway, because we're supposed to be. Anyway. Anyway. Um, it'll all be <laughs> fine. It'll all be fine. Of course, of course. Um, as always, I just I um, I mean, tech is always um, a favorite uh, of mine. <laughs> you know, it's always the surprise element. Yeah, I mean, I thought I knew what I was doing. I mean, this is the second time, but I've only done it twice, and therefore I'm obviously not quite familiar enough with it. Mm. Um, so let's just have another little look on LinkedIn. Why isn't it live on LinkedIn? I don't know. Anyway, it doesn't matter, does it? <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I can't tell whether it matters or not. Um, I mean, they do have the link to the zoom session anyway so they i mean they will need to join via zoom in order to enter their videos right uh, to enter their questions yes i mean what will happen as soon as we open the waiting room people will join us and I'll, I've, I've got it can you see a countdown clock happening um, hold on. I was on a different window. I can see the count on the eight minutes, 43, yeah. you mean? Yes. So in theory, b between now and then, that's sort of when we'll open the, the, the breakout room. <clears throat> yeah. Um, um now we'll... Between now and then, that's oh, sort of when we'll open... Switch that off. And I will, um, I'll, I'll be the MC and kind of gu guide you and the rest of the, of the universe um, through this, um, if, if, if I may. You absolutely may. And um, I will, and let me just copy that to see how it works out. Oh yeah, that's nice because I kind of copy pasted the kind of the various links um, um, in, a, I mean, they will not be able to see that when they enter. So they will, I will just post that when, um, when you tell me so, or towards the end. Um, I will post the various links. Perfect. That's great. Thank you very much. I've made you a co-host, so you should be able to do cool. lots of clever things. Um, right. If I sh put the, share this link here with you, actually, just put this in the chat window. You can see we're live on YouTube. Um, I don't know whether anyone's with us or not. But last time I did this, we were also live on LinkedIn, but I don't think that's working today. I don't know why. Yeah. Anyway, I must work out how to do this. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I never, um, I've never done it either. So I'm not a big help here. I'll put this, um, this link, the YouTube link on our um, page. And then we should probably just speak very seriously about topics, right? <laughs> because we are alive. <laughs> yeah. I, so maybe, um, why don't I join you on, um, you don't, oh, I, should I give you a call on Signal and we can be sort of not messing around here? Should yep. I call you on Signal? 
All right, I'll see you on signal. Right, I'll switch my video.
<clears throat> there we are again. Yeah, great. Let's, um, I'll switch the um, security off so everyone can just automatically join. Cool. So not enable wait room. I see Paul again. <laughs> Hello again. <laughs> I didn't get but, changed. <laughs> well, I hope this time with a bit more text ability. Um, it was still amazing. Good, good. I'm glad you liked it. Hello, everyone else. Hello. Hi, Heather. Hi. Hi, Marie Christine. Hi, Christina. And Rashad is not yet fully here with us. So. Welcome, everyone. Oh, hi, Grace. So good to see you again. <laughs> this week. <laughs> yeah, this week, several times. <laughs> of course, Christina, yeah, it's very late for you, I understand. Um, thanks for joining. Um, very late at night, midnight. Wow. That's a really good excuse to have cameras off, I think. Don't you think, Sean? <laughs> Beautiful. I, I guess we'll just give everyone another minute or so to, to join us um, and then we kick it off. Hi, MC. How are you? Very good. Yourself? Very well. Nice to see you again. How was your holiday? Excellent. <laughs> good. Yeah. A great three weeks. So... Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. that sounds great. It's always quite hard to know who's going to come, Suzanne. Why don't we just start and whoever comes, comes. We're, we're, we're only sort of here for half an hour or so. That's true. Absolutely. Let's respect everyone's time. So, yeah, welcome to our session today. Um, uh, as we're going to speak about um, systems and uh, the whole strategy point around it. And um, let me maybe briefly introduce myself and then I introduce um, Sean to you. So I'm a facilitator for change and culture. I live in Heidelberg, Germany, um, and I'm also a Lego series play facilitator for, I don't know, a, a few number of years now. And I've got to know Sean mostly last year, I think it was um, at the beginning of the pandemic when Sean and the team really had the great idea of taking the whole Lego series play online and to make it available with the magic hands and with the build alongs um, to a whole new level of Lego series play. So Sean is not only um, a great facilitator for Lego series play, he's also a trainer, he's an author. So, so far I think you've written three books, I think, and I have them all. So if you haven't, go get them. Um, and of course he's a host for so many great events like this one. So welcome, Sean. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I think um, as a, this is really going to be a session where you can ask your questions as well. So please use um, the chat window or just unmute yourself and ask a question directly. Um, it's really going to be great fun and very just, you know, conversational. So um, please enter any experience that you have, share them with us or any questions that you may have. And of course, please touch base also with Sean afterwards um, if you want to dig deep on some specifics around that. So um, yeah, I think that's should be enough for, for the intros, I think, uh, and we can dive quite directly into. So I've, I have a question to, to just to get the conversation going and that probably really um, hopefully invites you to, to ask questions as well. So I mean, Lego series play is around basically three levels of model build. It's kind of the individual models, it's the shared models. And then what we're mainly talking about today is kind of the system models. And when would you use Lego series play, Sean, for, um, for build three system models? Yeah, it's a really good question. And um, I mean, I think three, two or three different answers. Uh, I think when groups, obviously if a group has a system issue, so a systemic issue is a really great place to use um, build level three. Um, for instance, there's a little case study <clears throat> of a, 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 a timetabling workshop I ran. Now timetabling in a university is a really complex issue and it affects all sorts of different people. So when you have a sort of a system-wide issue, that's a great 
place mm. to use a build level three workshop. And I ran a training for the US Army War College. And, you know, if we think about um, the military and how they play war games, war games is another really obvious place um, to sort of place, play out some scenarios. Um, there was another really interesting um, case study, which I don't think I've ever shared with anyone. I ran um, uh, a training for some PhD students up in Newcastle, and we were trying to understand um, addiction. Mm -hmm. um, and what we did was we had them build, let me just share my screen with you. Oh, yes, please. Um, um, this one here, um, play and window. One second. Oops, try again. So what we did was we had them build a shared model to um, show the consequences of um, drug overuse for mm -hmm. some different personas. And what was really interesting, if I just sort of switch my screen over, was um, this is what they came up with. So this was the shared model that they built. So this was something around showing the consequences of drug overuse. And then when we looked at it systemically, we built a little set of agents. And this agent here was somebody who was overusing drugs, mm -hmm. taking the first step on the road to recovery. And what was so interesting about this super tiny little agent is it became the most connected agent in the mm -hmm. system model. And so for instance, that one insight gave them, a, really unlocked their thinking because it f helped them really focus on, so what can we do to help people take the first step on the road to recovery. And of all of the agents that we had, that was the most important one. So I think it's when people want a more rigorous understanding about what's really going on. That's when Build Level 3 is a really great thing to use. And I think what I was most impressed with um, with the Build Level 3 is that you, you really see how things are impacted by, as you call them, by one agent. Um, because if you draw from kind of from one end, it all comes back to kind of one or two agents who are really so important that you should really kind of focus on that. And I think that's something which may be also maybe obvious for some people if you put that on the wall, but it's so much more impactful if you really see it in front of you with this with the build, uh, with the system build. I think that was just amazing. Yeah, I tell you what we've started doing, and this is this is a relatively new idea. Um, Typically, in a Build Level 3 workshop, you get a group to build a shared model of a future state. Let's call it a vision. Then we build the system around it, and we, we look at the factors that might influence that future state. And these days, what we almost always do is go back to the vision and say, having learned what we've learned by exploring the system, how would we refine the vision? And the vision model is always significantly more robust after a group has modeled the this, this system-wide um, issues that the vision lives in. In actual fact, sometimes even some of the agents become a part of the vision model. Now that's not how LEGO series players traditionally taught. Traditionally, a, a group would um, create a set of identity models and then build a system around it, but they would never return to the identity to say, ha having learned what we've learned, what changes would we now make? So that's a tiny little improvement point, but one that, that I think is, is, is really powerful, a really powerful idea. Do you know, as I was thinking about this this morning, um, I actually thought within LEGO Serious Play, any times that we, we get invited to help a team imagine a future state in something like a shared model, actually, if time and budget allowed, it would always be best to do it systemically. Mm -hmm. And Joel just put a nice comment into the chat, uh, which says, those agents become a brilliant pressure test for the big vision and ideals. And I think that's, that's, it also takes courage, I think, to go back to kind of look at that vision again, right, to see, is it really up for a test against the pressure, against really kind of the, the system build? And does it really hold stable? Um, and then to, to say, well, maybe we need to refine it. And I think that's really kind of a yeah, it's, it seems like a very courageous step to do. Yeah, Joel, I don't want, want to put you on the spot, but if there's anything you'd like to add to this sort of mm. part of the conversation, please just sort of you know, chip in. Yeah, sure. I mean, I think um, I've got a couple of a couple of particular workshops that I've run in mind here. And you know, I think 
when I've run them, that vision thing comes at the start of the day. Yeah. You know, everyone's fresh off their first coffee. You know, they've they've still got that delight from walking into a room with surprise Lego on the table, and you know, they're they're really sort of riding high on 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 the buzz of of this lovely playful environment in the morning, yeah. and. Yeah, I think by the time you've by the time you've gone through a couple of other stages of conversation, you've you know you've brought that that kind of dose of reality and and the contextualization that happens by building the agents and saying you know what well, what what might influence what might impact the work that we do, um, you know it it brings that kind of realism and achievability into your reviewed sense of vision. Um, Otherwise, you do sort of have that risk by the end of the day of, you know, the vision potentially. Yeah, you want your vision to be, to be ambitious, but you also don't want it to be, you know, you don't want to have built the rod for their back. Mm, Let me show, show an example, actually, of a before and after. So yeah, <clears throat> this is a, a mural, <clears throat> excuse me, um, from a Build Level 3 session run online. Here was the first version of the vision that the team built really sort of simple i didn't catch that could you try again <laughs> oops oh no <laughs> siri's joining us so you can see it's a really super simple vision model um by the time we got to the end this is where they wound up at with the refined model mm. let's just get rid of that so you can see over here significantly more more complicated mm. significantly richer version of the model having gone through the, the systems. So very sort of simple before, significantly richer after. So that's quite a good example of saying, you know, if time and budget allowed, build level three would always be a good thing to do in a sort of a, a visioning piece. And I think that's a, that's a good point. What time would you allocate to a system build workshop? Because of course, I mean, you have to go through various stages as you would with other um, Lego series play workshops. So how much time do you think is necessary for a team to really dive deep into that? Yeah, this is a, this is a really great question. I mean, honestly, minimum two days would be, mm. um, it, it takes about a day to build a system model. Um, if you don't kind of, you know, absolutely rush it. Um, and then I, I, the way that we teach Build Level 3 is we say that once you've built the system model, you then use it for the insight stage. So it's as though you've got a, a set of steps to go through to build the system model. And then once you've got it, you could spend at least half a day, probably longer, using that system model to gain um, some insight. Um, and, and could you maybe say, what, what is an insight, Sean? What would that be? How would that look like? Um, so, I mean, typically what, in, let's call it in a sort of strategy workshop, what we typically do is work with the um, team beforehand to develop a set of scenarios what are some scenarios that will keep this organization awake at night? So genuine, difficult, scary things that that organization may face. Mm. And then what we can do is we can sort of say, well, let's play that scenario out. Let's see what will happen in your system model if that scenario comes true. Um, so, for instance, within the U.S. Army War College, we ran a scenario which sort of said, well, so, so they're a war college. They have a you know, physical campus. They, people go to their place to learn. And um, we played out two scenarios. What happens if there's a scary mutation of the COVID virus mm -hmm. and all classes need to be online for the next three years? Mm -hmm. Now, that's a genuinely scary scenario for educators, um, we played out another scenario which sort of said, what happens if the Department of Defense cuts their budget in half? Mm -hmm. So these are two things that genuinely keep those guys awake at night. And we played out those scenarios to sort of say, well, what would we do? Mm. So those are two examples of where you might gain some insight. In the case of the drug overuse um, 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 scenario, um, case study I showed you earlier, uh, we were trying to understand the systemic factors that drive drug overuse. Um, so, and the, the insight that we gained that helping people take the first step on the road to recovery was a really, really big insight. 
Um, the only other thing on the timing thing, in fact, I can share another quick example with mm -hmm. you. Yes. And, and in the meantime, please, if you have any questions, please put them into the chat or just unmute yourself um, and, and raise them. Um, this directly. is a case study on the Series Play Pro website um, back from 2015. Um, and this was um, an, an example of a, I think it was about a four hour workshop. So this was a system build. Um, a small group of people working together for just four hours to try to understand something of the timetabling. Mm. Um, and the bio apprentice one, the medical one that I showed you earlier, that was also three hours. So I have done a system workshop in as short as three hours. Um, super fast, super simple. But I think to use it really, really effectively, you could really do with two days. Mm. Yeah, especially I think the insights and that was my learning when I also took the training with you is really because that's where the richness comes in from the learnings around the system model build of really what what can you do? What does it mean? How do we need to prepare? How do we need to play out things? How do we need to continue or to pivot? And I think that's really where time should be well spent on those insights um, as well. Be lovely to hear from Paul, actually. So Paul put a comment in the window. He worked with a group recently who built a vision and then they made some connections. Paul, perhaps you'll just share that story with us. Hi, everybody. Uh, good morning or good afternoon. And there is a good night in the room. And um, yeah, so they were they wanted to look at the vision. They had a vision statement. They wanted to create something to make it more, you know, communicatable, if that's a word, um, to the rest of the staff. And uh, it got kind of big, you know, they really got into it and they, there was a lot because it was coming from multiple departments um, and they became, I'm going to say, mildly obsessed with making these connections within the vision. So it's about six or eight base plates big and they really just got so much value from going, well, that part is connected here to there to there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it, it changed, the workshop changed, it evolved, but for them, they got the value from just making those connections, even though it was all on the one mm -hmm. kind of solid structure. Great. Oh, that's a good insight, yeah. And MC has asked, how would you schedule this two days online? MC, would you just unpack that for us? What, what's your, just talk through that question. Sure, I was wondering, you, you talk about your, your study case for two days. Was it in person, this two days? Um, I've or... done it. I've done it both. both? I've done two days online and three days face to face is the longest that I've run. Okay, um, so the the workshop online will be three hours, four hours. How will you? Because a day in person and a day online is totally different for me. Yeah. So about the length of the the duration of the workshop. So that was my question actually. Yeah, I mean, well, I think it's kind of down to the um, the desires of the client, really. Mm. Um, I mean, I've done two days online. In fact, you know, you've spent two days online with me. Yeah. <laughs> so, so if we spend two days online, uh, our way of, of dealing with that is just to break it up into, you know, okay. religious breaks every 50, 60 minutes. Okay. But, but actually, here, here is, I think this is an opportunity that COVID has created for us. So we've all spent 18 months trying to work out how to do stuff online. And the problem of Build Level 3 workshops is it's really difficult to get senior executives in a room for two or three days. Um, so in actual fact, I think the online version of Build Level 3 allows you to take a, let's call it a two-day workshop and break it down into four half day chunks, you know, Friday afternoon, Wednesday afternoon, the following week, Monday afternoon. And actually that's something that, you know, online allows. It'd be really hard to do that face to face because everyone has to travel to back to the venue the whole time. But I think that that's one of the things that online Lego series play allows, uh, which wasn't possible um, in a face to face world. Um, we were asked last week whether we could run um, an online workshop for 150 people um, globally, um, including shared model building. Um, so my fingers are crossed that that happens. And if we do that, we will gather a team of 18 facilitators um, to, um, to have each breakout group facilitated. Mm. Um, so I really hope that happens. 
Yeah. And I think, I mean, that's, a, I think, a good topic of kind of um, the benefits or the downsides of face-to-face -face versus online, because I think, at least, at least for a facilitator, I have the impression that online requires a lot more of preparation on my part as a facilitator versus um, if I kind of take everything with me and, and take it to the, to the venue um, and the conference room, because you need to be more aware of kind of your technical setup, your the lightning and everything, much more so than if you are in a in a face to face environment. Uh, maybe you'd like to share some experiences from you, or of course everyone else in the room here. Please um, share some experiences that you have that you've had um, over the past eighteen months. Yeah, I mean, I think actually, if you are fluent in both, the amount of time is about the same. Mm. Um, when you are new to online build level three, it feels like there's more to do. Mm. But in a face-to-face -face build level three, you've got to find the right room, lug suitcases of bricks, sometimes halfway around the world, um, no doubt move the tables and chairs around to make the kind of setup that you want. And there's a lot of faff involved in a face-to-face -face build level three workshop. Online, you need fast broadband, good lighting, good cameras, good setup, lots of screens. And the first time you do it, it feels really onerous. But I think actually, in terms of time, it's about the same. In fact, arguably less, uh, mm -hmm. because we don't have to, to travel. That's um, true. Yeah. In terms of kit and competency, there is definitely a whole bunch of extra technical stuff that we have to consider if we're going to do build level three online. Yeah. Any any voices from the room? Just, Paul, please go ahead. Uh, yeah, just one thing from kind of recent experience was uh, going back to Sean's training and advice is the planning is so much longer than you think, just getting that kind of structure plan. Um, but I think that's the same for digital and for in person. Um, I did a workshop this week and I was lucky because, you know, I've been to this office a good few times, but this was, it was going to be four separate groups at various times. And it took me three hours just to set the room up. Mm -hmm. Luckily, they left me in there the night before. So that mm -hmm. they just walked out at six o'clock and they left me. But I was amazed at how long it took. And just thinking, what are they going to need on each station, moving around, doing all this? And thankfully, they had a coffee machine on site. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's a great example of, you know, it does take a long time to set a physical space up and it also takes quite a while, you know, a couple of hours to get ready for a build level three online. Mm. Um, and actually, just to amplify one of the points that Paul's making, um, getting the objectives right, the planning and the prep for a build level three. If we're thinking about a systems piece, I did a piece of work with HSBC. Now, HSBC is an enormously complicated organization. It is a very complex adaptive system. And it would be so easy to focus the workshop on the wrong part of the bank. Mm. So when you have a very complex system, you need to be really clear about the boundaries what do we include in this system build? What's the focus of this task? What's the point of it? Because it would be so easy just to start modeling bits that are interesting, but maybe not the sort of the subject focus. So I think that the, the focus and the prep for a Build Level 3 workshop is more demanding and takes mm -hmm. more time. And to pull them back into the things that you've agreed on, right, uh, which is also kind of the, the, the skill then of the facilitator during the session. Yep. Paul, you've unmuted yourself. Please go ahead. Um, sorry to go again, but one thing oh, that I found quite interesting is afterwards, when you've done a digital workshop, it's all there, whatever mm -hmm. platform you use yeah. on PowerPoint, or it's, you don't have much tidying up to do afterwards. You just say, mm -hmm. there you go. You can take what you want from it. But with the in-person one, there is loads more to, to do apart from tidying all of your mm -hmm. stuff away, yeah. just trying to document it and so forth. And that's, that can be something to really factor in time-wise. Yeah, right. I do think there's a very simple little uh, principle underneath this, particularly in face-to-face -face workshops. I've run two face-to-face -face workshops this week, one on Tuesday for 60 people and one yesterday for 16, is I make it absolutely a rule that the participants tidy up after themselves. <laughs> Um, I, I ran a workshop for Google with 180 research engineers and at the end of the workshop they all headed to the door and I was in there for hours tidying up uh, and I was after that never again 
So, you know, um, I think it's a really good idea with a face to face workshop to make the clear up a, a collective activity. So, so such a simple little thing. Um, and I think there's something quite nice about, you know, mm. Um, building and then pulling it back apart right and pulling exactly. it back into the original piece is kind of uh, excellent I, I i always say now children what do we do after we've been playing we tidy up <laughs> <laughs> and people probably like that as much as children tidying up the, yeah, uh, right. the space yeah, <laughs> joel right. please yeah just while we're while we're on that the whole point is about getting participants to tidy up after themselves what's kind of the what do you do in terms of participants capturing mm -hmm. capturing media and photos and things of the model? Like I'm, I very much run a, an online space that everyone adds to from their phones. Um, is there a better way that someone's... You it's mean face-to-face. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, online or face-to-face. -face. I'm talking, I'm, 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 in, I'm in Perth, so kind yeah. of our way online. of working is very 2019. Yeah. Um, we've been enormously lucky. <laughs> Let me show you a couple of things, Joel. So this is a little case yeah. study um, I talk about on our training. This is um, an example of a Build Level 3 workshop. Um, so this was the model that they built. So there's the sort of on the green base plate, the uh, future state. And then throughout the workshop, I will record some videos. In fact, let me just make sure you can hear the audio. Um, so share sound. So for instance, we'll make some little videos. Oops. Sorry make some little videos. So for instance, halfway through, this is the beginning of their shared identity. Okay, this model represents the core identity of the RIPE NCC. As you can see, it's quite a, quite a vast model with no real um, focus points. Our staff um, backs up nearly everything that occurs within the RIPE NCC. Our staff are coming from a very diverse background and they're extremely... And then if we were to think about the agent stage... Management fighting, uh, not happy with each other. Um, pop, 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 fraud. fraud, yeah, fraud. Uh, our lovely board. Uh, the, <laughs> the, UN, the UN, uh, and ITU. Uh, IPFIX, IPFIX so, uh, uptake. So um, what I typically do is record videos um, at various points throughout the process. In fact, yes, just because it's in front of me, here's an example of some videos I shot on Tuesday. So this is um, a group of people talking through 10 shared models. Yeah. We start with solid foundations. Pass the stick. Working in an open and transparent manner to flourish. Pass the stick. Starting to work on the final solution. Ooh. Pass the stick. So... That's just another nice little technique of, in fact, Paul commented on it. It's the sort of, what do we call it? The tag team storytelling. So I'm a big advocate of photographs and videos um, in face-to-face -face workshops. Lots of photos, lots of videos. And you can do the same online as well, because if you are on Zoom or any other device, you can basically kind of record those snippets of where they go and explain the models, whether it's individual or shared or whatever model, you can kind of record that and have that made available to the to the audience afterwards. So it's it, it works nicely on, on online as well. So absolutely. Mm. Yeah, that's great. I love the I love the little person perspective out the front of the, mm -hmm. the camera and the past the stick technique. Yeah, gonna... so I used an old iPhone. This is a Belkin Lego case, and I've yeah. made something called Lego Cam. So it's, it's in my suitcase at the moment, so I only finished using it yesterday. So you can sort of clip some bricks onto the back and put a little minifigure persona in, in front of it. So that's yeah, what I nice. call Lego Cam. But there's a, if you, in mastering, if, any, if you want it, Joel, I can email you a copy of it. I've written about the Lego Cam in this book. So drop me an email and I'll send you a PDF of this. Uh, later That'd be brilliant. Today. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. I'll which is, often... Which is... I'll often... Sorry, go on. No, no, go on, go on. I'll let you okay. finish your um, thought. Yeah, I'll often kind of while while participants are putting uh, a collective model of some kind together, I'll whip around to each bag and build them a pointer with one of those tall neon antennas on the top. Yeah. Um, I actually cool. borrowed that from a participant one time that built one who was, you know, so that he could talk in minute detail. But I love the idea of the Lego case. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah. As Sean was, mention, uh, was mentioning the book, I just put into the chat the various channels uh, where you can reach out to Sean and explore more about the books, um, the trainings, etc. And of course, also the LinkedIn page where Sean will continue to have those lunch and learn conversations, I'm sure. Well, there's also some other useful links in there. So the LSP Connect um, is the mm -hmm. second one down. Ben and Guy run a fantastic community. So if you haven't encountered LSP Connect, I'd strongly recommend that you go there. Yeah. You can download um, the LSP magazine that they write and they've got an event coming up in October. So their events are really, really worth attending. If you haven't encountered the open source guide, the original one that Lego wrote in 2010, um, that's available there too. Um, and if any of you on this call haven't got our books, and most, most of you we know, so you do, but if any of you haven't got them and you want them, drop me an email and I will send you some free PDFs. Um, no problem at all. Cool. Any other questions before we kind of um, close the official side of this call? I know half an hour runs by like... Great. Um, Helen has asked me to um, um, talk about, we're running a training, mm. Build Level 3 training in a couple of weeks. Um, so if, if you want to learn to do this online, on the 29th and 30th, we're running a training. And she suggested that we offer a discount, 25%, to anybody who wants to come along to that. Um, so if you want to do that, come along, um, use the discount code on air 25 or drop me an email and you would be welcome to come to that. If any That's in September, right? 29th, 29th to 30th of September. So if you're interested in, I think it's normally it's 800 pounds with discount, it would be 600 and it's a day and a half training. So if any of you want to do that, that's, that's the message from Helen. Excellent um, opportunity to do so. Well, thank you so much for attending. You're more than welcome to stay here for a little chat after the official recording. Thanks so much, Sean, for your insight. And of course, for everyone else's contribution today. Um, and yeah, enjoy 